Welcome to the Bahamas. We're here as part of the Catlin Sea View Survey. My name's Jamie and I just want to share with you one of the experiments from the Coral Oceans Education Programme. This experiment is the coral feeding game and it's just to show you how a coral gets its energy in two different ways. Now to do this, this little game experiment, what you're going to need is a bit of card or cardboard, a green marker pen, or you could use small green stickers, a rubber glove, some tape, and some cotton wool. Now the first thing is I'm going to use my hand, my left hand, to be the coral polyp, put the glove on. So my hand represents the coral polyp or coral animal and it's related to other animals like the sea anemone or jellyfish with tentacles. But the difference with the coral polyp is it sits inside a calcium carbonate structure. So I'm just going to wrap this piece of card around my, my arm quite loosely and then tape it together. Might be easier if you have a friend to help. So as you can see, we have the coral polyp here sitting in its calcium carbonate structure and during the day it can shelter inside and avoid being eaten by any predators. But if the tentacles are inside, how does it get its energy? This is where we're going to use the green marker and there's something quite special that the coral polyp does. It has a symbiotic relationship with a type of algae called Suxanthellae and we're going to represent that algae that lives inside the coral tissue with this green marker. On the back of my glove here, a few more. So during the day, when the sun's shining and the coral's in the shallow water, it can still get energy from photosynthesis. So the algae photosynthesizes, gets energy from the sun and passes that to the coral polyp. Now corals get about 70 to 90 percent of their energy through this photosynthesis, through this relationship with the algae. But they also feed in another way. They feed in a way that's traditional to sea anemones and jellyfish and that's using their tentacles to catch plankton. On their tentacles, they have these stinging cells, and they're called nematocysts, and they're actually quite sticky to the touch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some tape, roll it up, put it on my fingers, and those are gonna represent those stinging cells I was talking about. So let's roll this up. It's a bit sticky, which is good for the coral. I'm just gonna place it there on my finger. Let's get a few more here. I've now got these very sticky tentacles on my fingers. And what I'm going to do is get some plankton, the cotton wool buds, and see if I can catch any as they come past in the ocean current. Oh, this is getting really sticky. So here goes. See if we're gonna, oh, got one. Missed that one. And so the plankton are these free flowing eggs, small animals, larva in the ocean. And at night, this is how the coral would be feeding, trying to catch this plankton using these stinging cells. So that is a coral feeding game experiment just showing you the two ways that a coral can get its energy. The first way, during the day, using photosynthesis and the algae living inside its tissue. And the second, coming out at night, using its stinging cells and tentacles to catch the plankton in the ocean.